Father, this morning, we ask that the floodgate be open. Let the rain of your word fall on the fertile soil of our hearts. Let the engrafted word produce that we may be called your true disciples. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. Say to your neighbor, peace to you. Peace to your house. Peace to all that you have. Including your territory of influence. And great peace to our beloved nation, Nigeria. In Jesus' mighty name. Brothers and sisters, I would like to start this morning with my expectations of you during search the scriptures. If we do not communicate clearly what the expectations are, you may not respond appropriately. My expectations of you and that of any teacher who stands here to teach the scriptures are threefold. How many? Threefold. I can't hear you. Threefold. Number one, when we gather together like this for the scriptures, please open your hearts and fully participate in hearing the word. Do not allow any distraction. During teaching, either here, so the scriptures of the service, main service, let no one distract you. Don't be like Martha. Just maintain the posture of sitting at the foot of the Lord to receive the word from him. Open your hearts and fully participate in hearing the word and responding appropriately to whatever you are asked to do. One word from the Lord can just change your circumstances forever. No, it's just Bible study. No, it's more than that. The very word that created the universe you're preaching in are the words that have been spoken. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 10, 30 to 33. See the posture of Cornelius when Peter got into his house. So Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the night hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon Etana by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. When he comes, he will do what? He will speak to you. So I send to you immediately, and you have done well to come. Now see the attitude of Cornelius and the people he gathered. Now therefore, we are all present before who? Don't do what you cannot do before your boss, before God. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear how many things? All the things commanded you by God. Now, therefore, we are all present before God to hear all things commanded you by God. And they heard. Because they heard well, the Holy Ghost came upon them and baptized them as they had done to the Jews. And Peter said, Can anyone forbid these ones from being baptized? I'm not sure they knew about baptism, but they complied. They were baptized and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and the prophesied. Read your Bible. He pays you to listen attentively. Let no one distract you. Receive that word. And number two, after you have received the word, like the people in the synagogue of the Jews in Berea, please receive the word we preach and teach with all readiness. But in addition to that, 
but fair-minded like the Berean Christians to search the scriptures daily to find out whether or not the things we teach you are so. There are so many perpetrators of error in the world. When you receive the word, do your own due diligence by checking the word you have received and see that nothing is really you at all. Then the moment you know that what you're being taught is accurate, number three, be doer of the word and not hearer only. Now, for number two, Acts 17, 10 to 12, let's see the Christians in Berea. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they walked into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word, how? With all readiness. Now, having received it with all readiness, they saw the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. It is then you can do the word. Therefore, many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. They themselves are the scriptures. It doesn't end in one hour here. You go home and put it side by side. Is this true? When that is done, then you can act on the word. Be do of the word, as my third expectation. And now here is only. If you do that, your blessing is guaranteed. You don't have to pray for blessing. Your blessing is guaranteed and you will not beg for bread. I'm going to repeat this again and again in the service today. Psalm 1, 1 to 3, blessed is the man. Then it says, going to pray for blessing. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands on the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. What will he be? As a result of that constant meditation, he shall be like a tree planted. I've taught you this before. In the means of his sentence, that P is capital P. He's not planted by man. Those who are planted in the house of our God shall flourish in the courts of our God. It's automatic. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruits in season. Whose leaf also shall not wither. It doesn't matter whether it's winter or summer. It's an all-weather plant. His leaves are not with her, and whatever it does shall prosper. Whatever it does shall prosper. James 1, 21 to 25. Therefore lay aside what? I can't hear you. I've told you you must respond accurately and positively. Lay aside what? All oh, filthiness. That filthiness, if you open to Ephesians chapter 5, it says, the filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Many of us don't have filthiness of the flesh anymore, but we have filthiness of the spirit. We keep malice. We are bitter. We hate. They will choke your spirit. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Please give me Ephesians chapter 5. I want you to know that that filthiness applies to both your spirit and the flesh. There's no point going to the bathroom, taking a clean wash every day, smelling with all kinds of fragrance, but your spirit man is bound by iniquity and poisoned by bitterness. Second Corinthians chapter 7 is the scripture I'm looking for. Filthiness of the flesh and filthiness of the spirit. Thank you very much. Therefore, having these promises below, let us cleanse ourselves from what? All filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. If your flesh is clean and your spirit is dirty, or your spirit is clean and your flesh is dirty, you are going to get into trouble. How do you do that? Open your hearts to us. Yeah, it's Paul standing and saying, we have wronged no one. Didn't he organize the killing of Stephen? Didn't he arrest many people and put them in prison? So we have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. If any preacher will stand there and say, I've not wronged any of you, he say, you slapped me yesterday, two years ago. No, he say, I repented of it. Paul said, God showed him mercy. 
So receive this word with readiness, check them, and obey them. Go back to James. James chapter 1, 21 to 25. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. If you're a preacher who preaches it and does not do it, you are self-deceiving. If you're a hearer and you don't do it, you are self-deceiving. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Oh, what happened in church this day? It was great. Pastor preached like a house on fire. We were all motivated. What did he say? Um, I will get the tape and tell you. It was emotional bubble gum. But he who looks into the perfect, he who looks into investigating it, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a dweller of the... I can't hear you. What was he hearing before? Word. How does he translate into work? You have investigated it. You are doing it. It becomes work. This one will be blessed in what he does. What are the three expectations? Number one. I cannot hear you. No mama. Give microphone to someone. What is the first expectation? Huh? Open your hearts and fully participate in hearing the word and responding appropriately to whatever you are asked to do. What's the second expectation? Like the people in the synagogue of the Jews in Berea, investigate the word you have heard, search and be sure it is true. Whether those things are so. And what is number three? Then do it. Faith without words is dead. Do it. And when you do it, what happens? Your blessing is guaranteed forever. So if you are walking carelessly and loosely and you have no fruit to show for hearing the word and doing the word, you have not done the right thing. These are the three expectations. Is this clear? Good. Let's go to today. Amen. We continue today with part 12 of the preeminence of Jesus and the church he bought with his blood. The preeminence of Jesus Christ and his church, part 12. This, this message will be part 2 of the contemplation last Sunday on the shining, wandering, and falling stars. If you can recall, with that last Sunday, with the three types of descendants that came out of Abraham, who later became Abraham, the father of faith and the friend of God. What are these three types? The dust of the earth, number two. The sand of the seashore, and number three, the stars of heaven. The stars are further divided into three. And what are these three? Shining stars, we saw that in Daniel 2 of 3. Wandering stars and the falling stars. Let me take the shining stars one more time. Daniel 2 of 3, because of time. Daniel 2 of 3. Those who are wise, ask your neighbor, are you wise? Or are you foolish? Why can't you talk? Ask him, are you wise? Receive the answer first. Are you wise? If he doesn't talk, he's foolish. Ask one more time. Are you wise? If it's your husband, say, darling, are you really wise? Put really there so that you can drive home the point that I don't think you are. And if it's your husband, husband or sweetheart, are you really wise? Well, we were told who then would you to Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars for some time. If you engage in that, you will shine forever and ever. I for Bogo. I for Bogo Shuba. I for Bogo Irawa. Any Kenyan. I for Bogo. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
and Proverbs 11.30. Why would those this be so? The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Not will be like. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins soul is wise. So what is the definition of being wise? Soul winner. I'm very sure that those of you who took part in last Sunday's of the scriptures, we by now already know that the fruit of the righteous is a byproduct of how a believer invests his time, his treasure, in advancing the kingdom of God through evangelism and missions. I laid it bare, and if you don't, if you're not here, please get the tape or the MP3 or YouTube wherever, <laughs> and study them. Today, we shall consider the wandering stairs. And if God permits us, we get to the shining stairs. The wandering stairs are those who have lost their tracks and their legitimate causes in life. The wandering stairs and those who have lost their tracks and their legitimate causes in life. Judges chapter 5, verse 12 to 20. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, sing a song. Arise, Barak, and lead your captives away, O son of Abinoah. Then the survivors came down, the people against the nobles. The Lord came down for me against the mighty. From Ephraim were those whose roots were in Amalek. See, these are sons of Joseph. But their roots are where? In Amalek. After you, Benjamin, with your peoples, from Macca, rulers came down, and from Zebulun, those who bear the recruiter's staff, and the princes of Issachar, you know, those who knew what Israel to do and were always at their command. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah, as Issachar, so was Barak, sent into the valley under his command. Among the divisions of Reuben, there were great reserves of heart. Shall I go? Shall I not go? Are you sure? Are you not sure? A double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Let him not think he will receive anything from the Lord. Why did you sit among the sheep falls to hear the pipings of the flocks? Why did you sit there? That's the voice you are hearing. The divisions of Reuben have great searchings of her. You know, you know what this is? I did. This is what is called paralysis analysis. You analyze and analyze and analyze and analyze. You are paralyzed and you do nothing. It's analysis paralysis. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan. And why did Dan remain on shapes? Asha continued at the seashore. And stayed by his inlets. Zebulon is a people who jeopardize their lives to the point of death. Naphtali also on the heights of the battlefield. You see, they're calling tribe by tribe, like calling department by department, ministry by ministry, unit by unit, of your contribution to the war against error, to the war against apostasy. I don't think pastors should say that. Uh, they will make him an enemy. My pastor should be careful. Hey, 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 hey. The kings came and fought. Then the kings of Canaan fought. In Tanakh, by the waters of Megiddo, they took no spoils of silver. Why? Because they fought from where? From the heavens. The stars from their courses fought against Israel. You can read the end of this story. A woman eventually kissed Isira in the tent. She was a homemaker. And what was said to Mary is, Bless are thou Mary. What was said to that woman, Bless, most blessed are you. Because in your homemaking industry, you kill the enemy of God. He asked for what I gave him, cold milk. And he drove a special nail into his throat and killed him. Please pay attention to verse 20 again. They fought from the heavens. The stars from their courses fought against Isera. Wandering stars do not maintain their courses. And once a star is not on its course, 
it has lost its track. It will then become sidetracked and a wandering star. Apostle Jude, the brother of the Lord, throw most light on these wandering stars. And if you like to know, chief among these wandering stars are preachers who turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, and for them, the blackness of darkness, that is the hottest part of hell, is reserved for them forever and ever. Jude 3 to 4. Give that to me in KJV. It's so sweet in KJV. You know that old English is pungent. Uh, really pungent. There are some days I just wait with KJV, okay? Jude 3 to 4 in KJV. Thank you. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was never for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Oh, progressive revelation full of error. No, it was once and for all delivered to the saints. Don't add to it, don't subtract from it. There's nothing to add to the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. For there are certain men crept in unawares. They crept in during COVID. Sending their perverse messages through social media. And I challenge you today, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to remember that Jesus was only 12 years old when he went to the temple and he confounded the doctors of law. God had given you a special ability in your teenage years. You know about social media. But all you use is to send messages all around. Deploy the resources into God's kingdom. Take the message you hear and preach and believe. And begin to disseminate it into that, er that terrain so that we can flush out apostates and perpetrators of errors. You are the apostles of now sent into media and into social media to break down the house of idols and practices of idolatry. Take that challenge upon you. Get ready to serve God like Jesus did at 12, like Daniel did in his teenage years, like David did when he killed Goliath in his teenage years. And don't just sit down and pipe him. And no, no, actually, actually, yes, we like to hear your voice loud and clear. But don't murmur, don't grumble. If we abandon the boat, you will not be here. We stayed on course. Whether we were hated or not, we did what God wants us done, to be done. And in your generation, you're going to find out in the main service, if you disconnect, we are one generation away from idolatry. You believe a lie, and it will not produce for you. Jude 3 to 4, let me continue to read. For there are certain men crouching and awares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. They pretended to be part of us, but they're not part of us. The Antichrist will go away from the church. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Once you turn grace into lasciviousness, you have denied God. Give me verse 12 and 13. Who are they? These are sports in your feasts of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds the air without water, carried about on winds, trees whose fruit wither, without fruit, twice dead. Who was twice dead, are you know? Goliath. The stone hit him, he died, he fell. And David jumped on him and said, excuse me, your sir. May God give you the strength to use the weapon of the enemy against the enemy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. They think they are smart in that terrain. Ah, because some of us are analog, they think we will not have children who will catch them. Oh, we have given birth to stars who will go into that terrain and flush out their arrow. Once they see there a red flag, they knock it down. Bah! This is a lie. The truth is this. By the time 50 men get into that terrain against one man, you will begin to backtrack. No senior pastor can do it all by himself. I'm analog, I'm telling you. 
but I'm trying to learn. But my sons and daughters will answer for me at the gate. In the mighty name of Jesus. Are we finished? They are sporting your face of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds the air without water, carried about on wings, trees whose fruit wither it, without fruit twice dead, pluck up by the roots. When you are rootless, you are fruitless. Tell, find out their roots. You won't find anyone they are accountable to. Raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved. The blackness of darkness forever. The blackness of darkness is the hottest part of hell. Dear friends, no sensible preacher should be in this category of the lascivious. No matter how soothing, eating he is, we want him to. Those who like and give us three steps to break through. There's no process, there will be no progress. Behold, I lay in Zion. A stone for a foundation. A stone for a foundation. Step one is I lay in Zion. Are you laid in Zion as a living stone? The next step after that is a tried stone. Why am I going through these trials? No test, no testimonials. No cross, no crown. A tried stone. And when it's been tried and it's proved everything, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he who believes shall not make haste. You can't jump it. You'll not be used by God. If God does not form you, he cannot fill you. No preacher, sensible preacher, should be in this category of the lascivious. No matter how soothing each year is wanting to, and no intelligent believer should follow such men. Let's read Paul's exhortation and injunction to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, now the Spirit expressly says, no mumbo jumbo, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith. <laughs> they were in the faith before, they will depart from the faith. How do you know? They will give heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. May God not bring you under such people. Yeah. Their hearts are sealed with hot iron. They will not repent. How can anyone in the 21st century Preach with a big agbada. Ask people to burn it after preaching and then ask the congregation to take the ash away. And you don't know that is evil. If the fathers do it, what do you expect of sons that came out of them? Oh, God instructed him to burn the Abbada into ashes so that people can take it away. That was the operational strategy of Isab above India. An aunt of ours followed his sister to India. They gathered the ash and they brought a photograph of that man whom he was in their living room. Everything they do, they take the ash. And then they started listening to me and they became part of the church. And they told me about this is Ababa. They bring all his chattels. They brought it to Akilo. I poured petrol on it. Hey, hey, he said, I said, shut up. Zababa, go Baba, is on you. So if a petty rascal, no matter the age, does that, is in the same class with his Ababa. And you see multitudes following them. No, they will take them into the abyss if they don't wake up. Okay, I've lost half of the congregation now. I'm touching your sacred cows. I've told you churches in Nigeria are classified into three. One, slave camps, where the people labor and labor and labor to sustain the false high lifestyle of their preachers. Number three, prison houses where the people cannot go out 
at all. They don't say, they don't check anything, whatever Baba say. That is why now, not what the word of God says. They are prisoners, locked up forever. But they don't know, those prison holders don't know that the prison door is open already. That the day God will smash them, you just discover that they cannot continue. And then they will start to correct the errors. But it's too late. A new generation will arise that will not believe a lie. And then you have houses of freedom and liberty where the truth of God's word sets men free. And you know, error works faster than truth. That's why truth has fallen in the streets and equity cannot enter. And if a man tries to do the righteous, he'll be the one perceived and perse I mean persecuted and almost destroyed. But guess what? Wait for the main service. You're going to arise and shine in the name of Jesus Christ. Second Timothy chapter number four. 1 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4. Listen to Paul as he charged Timothy. I charge you therefore before God, sin a president. I charge you therefore before God, deputy sin a president. I charge you therefore before God, chairman of church council. I charge you therefore before God, all pastors, elders, and ministers, and teachers. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. That's, that's your assignment. Do what? Preach the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long sovereign and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to reduce and jokes, to fables. Okay? Is that what you want to do? God is going to give you treasure with pleasure without measure? Huh? Say that with me. Treasure? treasure. With pleasure? pleasure? Without measure? Treasure? treasure. With pleasure? With pleasure. pleasure? Without measure? Only. By Rao Janjuku. And just in case you do not know, such lascivious teachers and lewd men and women are thieves who come to steal, to kill, and destroy like the devil himself. They will sweet talk you and push you out of your destiny. A cursory look into today's entertainment industry. We show you how many musicians like Michael Jackson, like Marvin Gaye, and others in our climb, whose parents were clergymen and who started their musical careers in the church as choristers or choir members are now agents of the devil singing and sweeping their victims ultimately into hell. Remember Marvin Gaye? Sexual healing. You remember? His father was a clergyman. And his father told him, these songs are wrong. You are part of the church. You cannot be singing this. He got angry and he went away to take his own rifle. His father got ready for him. Before he, bah! he shot him down. I'd rather kill you than let you take me to hell. He was prosecuted, but they knew it was self-defense. They come to lure you away, to derail you, to distract you. And from the moment they distract you and derail you, you stop being a shining star. You join the wandering stars, and in no time, what happened to them will happen to you. Gamaliel's counsel. Huh? You want Gamaliel's counsel? Acts of the Apostle? It's not in my note. Acts of the Apostle? I think it's chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 33. Acts of the Apostle 5, 33. I'll read up to verse 37. When they heard this, they were furious and they plotted and plotted to kill the apostles, to kill them. The one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, 
a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take it to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men, the apostles. For some time ago, Theodas rose up, claiming to be somebody. <laughs> a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all, all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. You join such teachers if your end product and your end goal in life is to become nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census. I told you, you know, factors influencing location of industry. So before you plant a church, you check the census and you see how many people are here. Then you, you are led by censors and not by the spirit. They drew away many people after him. He also perished and all who obeyed him were dispersed. That's the end product of following wrong teachers. A word is enough for the wise. Like I wrote this morning for the youth, you're not a rolling stone that gathers no moss. Stop rolling about. You're not a rolling stone. As for the falling stars, quickly because of time, Satan and one third of the angelic hosts that fell with him are described as falling stars. In Revelation 12, 1 to 9. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with a moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. He still drew a third of the stars, as a third of the angels, who are called stars too. He still drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God before the enemy would catch up with him to the throne of heaven. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But it did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Say to the devil, no place for you in heaven. And we are sons of God. We are shining stars. And our assignment is to give no place to the devil. There's no place for you in heaven. And we will ensure by God's grace that there's no place for you in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our businesses, and on earth in the name of Jesus. So the great dragon was cut at that serpent of a whole called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. It was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. That's a portrait of the falling stars. It follows that the human agents that they possess and influence will also inevitably end up like them as falling stars. Let me spend the rest of the min few minutes that we have on where then are the stars in our churches and our families. Where are the stars? Why is the church of the living God's firmament not filled with shining stars. We had the stars in our churches and our families. Can we really see these stars? Are they hidden? The first factor that hinders our stars from shining is ignorance of God's plan and purpose for their lives. Ignorance, total ignorance. Like the ego that found itself in the midst of chicken and started eating corn like them. Until one day, there was a bright day, the sun was shining, and the mother ego spread its wings and was flying. 
And the eagle in the midst of chicken looked up. So I think I looked like that one. And suddenly, certain things began to move. The flip and spread its wings and never returned to the den of chickens anymore. You are going to rise and shine and fly yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. It's sheer ignorance that is keeping our stars from shining. I'll give you an example of Jacob's family. Jacob had how many sons? Twelve sons. The eleventh child, like the eleventh hour, was who? Joseph. And Benjamin, the pampered one, was the twelfth. <laughs> Joseph had a dream. So the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow to me. Genesis 37, 1 to 11. Every child of Jacob was born to be a shining star. Genesis 37, 1 to 11. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. That's the history of Jacob. <laughs> This is the history of Jacob, Joseph. Being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Belia and the sons of Zilpah. They became wives, but they were house helps before. His father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they... Uh-huh. That's a factor that clamped down their star from shining. Hatred. He who hates his brother is a murderer. Eternal life does not abide in him. You can't shine. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, Joseph had a dream. It's, it's my dream that is irritating some people. He's full of himself. He pretend 1964. He pretend. Is he the only one created? Why don't you have your own dream? Do you realize that the first message I preached at the Lateran Assembly in May of 1989 is, I will reach my goal and I will fulfill my destiny? You think it was a joke? The second message I preached was dead to public opinion. You think I'm just like that now? It, been, it doesn't matter what you think. I'm set on course. I will not be distracted. I will not become a wandering star. Neither will I become a falling star. I will continue to shine. If you hate me, you clip your wings. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers. And they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream which I've dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And indeed your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? They knew the interpretation. Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his work. Hated him, hated him more, hated him even more. Then he dreams still another dream. Your hatred can stop my dream. Joseph had two, I have two. I will reach my goal. I will fulfill my destiny. I hope you'll be destiny helpers. But even if you're not, we'll still give you food to eat. Oh, yes. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I dreamed another dream. This is superior to the first one. <laughs> because it was only you that it involved. Look, I've dreamed another dream and this time the sun. That's the father. The moon. The mother. <laughs> because the mother draws strength from the sun. That's why women shine brighter in the night. Especially when they go to black tie. 
parties. Hey, they are all elegant. The man is all drawn, drained. <laughs> and they are bright and they smile and they shine. <laughs> okay. I saw you and your wife yesterday. I know the difference. Then he, look, I've dreamed another dream. And this time, the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowed down to me. What were they? 11 stars. So he told it to his father and his brothers and his father and he big them and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I, she know the sun and the moon, shall your mother and I, who was dead by this time, but left another Peking called Benjamin. <laughs> what is this dream that you have dreamed? That shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you. Shall we do that? And his brothers Envy. So hatred compounded turned into envy. And envy produces only one thing. Bone cancer. Rottenness of the bones. And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the mind, matter in mind. Let's find out what happened. Are you ready for this? Genesis. Chapter 45. From verse 1 to 16. Then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brother, please come near to me. So they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. The best kept secret in Canaan came out. Benjamin knew who sold his brother. <laughs> but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourself because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years, the famine has been in the land, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity to you in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here. God used you as to provide transportation system into my destiny. Keep on hating me, keep on being envious. I'll reach my goal and fulfill my destiny. And those who care would also reach their own goals. It was not you who sent me here by God. And he has made me what? A father to Pharaoh. And lord of all his house. And a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Before this place. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him. Thus says your son Joseph. God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near to me. You and your children, your children's children, your flocks and your herds, and all that you have. They I will provide for you, lest you, you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. For there are still five years of famine. And behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen. And you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. After that, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house saying, Joseph's brothers have come. So he pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. Let's back track a little and find out what happened before Joseph revealed himself. To his brothers. Genesis. We have a lot to read. But we'll quickly cut it short in righteousness. Genesis 42. Beginning from verse 1. Thank you. I think that will be sufficient for us. Because I would have showed you where Jacob also bowed down before Joseph. <laughs> when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt... Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? 
And he said, indeed, I've heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for, buy for us there, that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt, left Benjamin at home. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, let some calamity befall him. These are bad boys. <laughs> These are bad boys. They brought Joseph's garment to me. I don't know what they would do with Benjamin. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Are we going to bow to you? Didn't we know you when you were growing up? Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. But he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. Then he said to them, where do you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan, our mission is to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Time is coming and it's here that people will not be able to figure you out. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them. Even when you think it will not come to pass, right before you it will come to pass. And he said to them, you are spies, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And he said to them, no, my Lord. <laughs> no, my Lord. But your servants have come to buy food. We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Who has questions? We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. But he said to them, no, but you have come to see the nakedness of the land. And they said, your servants are twelve brothers. The sons of one man in the land of Canaan, Maka. <laughs> and in fact, the youngest is with our father today. And one is no more. Amy. Amy, Lenny we <laughs> If they only 
listen attentively to Joseph and put appropriate interpretation on his dream, they will know they were the 11 stars. But they could not shine because of hate, because of envy. Hey, Lift your hands to heaven. Anything that will not allow your stars to shine, repent of them. Nobody can block you from shining except yourself. If you hate, if you are envious, there's no way you will not one day bow down and repent of the garbage you carry inside of your spirit. Lord, I pray for your people today. I thank you for bringing them to hear this word. Let them be doers of the word to repent of every hatred and every envy so that they can begin to shine. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Lai pe lai jino Ayo mi fere de Lai pe lai jino E o wa ba mi tu pe Lai pe o Lai pe lai jino Ayo mi fere de Oh, oh, oh. 